Hello there and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Macintosh mice and pointing devices and accessories. And I uh, just want to point out a few interesting ones that I've come across and just go into uh, what makes them different from your standard mouse. As you may know, Apple's Lisa and Macintosh personal computers with their point-and-click graphical user interface helped to change the landscape of personal computers in the early 1980s. This was made possible because of the mouse, a revolutionary interface device that allowed you to easily control the cursor on your screen. The concept of a mouse was so revolutionary that virtually every computer ended up having one. Even computers before the Lisa and the Macintosh would get mouse support in one way or another. The Apple II and the Commodore 64 are good examples of this. Now Apple's mouse would become unique because it only had a single button. This worked well with the computer and its operating system and simplified the use of the device. But later on other manufacturers would take a different route and introduce mice with multiple buttons. Later on two button mice became popular and pretty much dominated the industry, Apple was the only competitor out there that just kept their mouse simple with one button. This simplicity was sometimes mocked by competitors and those that wrote off the Macintosh line of computers and their loyal fan base. This isn't to say you couldn't use a third party two button mouse on your Macintosh, you could, but you would likely have to install some type of driver or something to make sure that that mouse actually acts like a two button mouse. Otherwise your primary mouse button and your secondary mouse button might just act the same way, as the Macintosh operating system was not smart enough at the time to take advantage of two button mice. Eventually, support for a two-button mouse was built into the Macintosh operating system. This meant that you could use a two-button mouse and that secondary click or right click would actually function as you would expect. When you use the button, a contextual menu or some shortcuts would come up, so it did work like a traditional Windows mouse may have. Before we get to the third-party mouse, here are some original OEM Apple mice. Uh, this one came with my Macintosh 512K. I believe it's the original model. Unfortunately, the uh, back is missing. Uh, so this is uh, model M0100. This other mouse, I believe, is for the Apple IIe. It has the same connector and a very similar design, except the click button is uh, a solid beige instead of this darker color here. Um, this uh, does have a different model. This is A2M4015. Um, and thankfully the back is uh, interchangeable, so I just swapped them out between the two mice. I thankfully don't have the need to use both of them at the same time, at least not yet. This mouse was released with the Apple II GS and was the first to use Apple's desktop bus port or ADB port. After the Macintosh Plus, all future Macs used the ADB port for their mice and keyboard accessories. This has a angled design, which you know, it's more comfortable than it looks, and this would become the standard for all Macintosh computers moving forward. Apple would update this with a better ergonomic design with the Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2. Although they look different, the functionality is the same. They both have a single primary button, and they both use Apple's Desktop Bus port, so you could use them on your Apple IIGS or any Macintosh computer with an ADB port. With the introduction of Apple's iMac personal computer in 1998, you didn't have any more of your legacy Apple ports. There was no ADB port, no serial port, no SCSI port. Instead, the computer had two USB ports. So therefore, Apple designed a brand new USB mouse just for the iMac. Here's a later model of the iMac mouse. This came with the Graphite DV model, and you could see that it's very small. Uh, if you compare it to an Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2, um, you could see that the, the size is quite different. Um, so, you know, people had a bit of trouble with this, I guess, if they were putting their entire hand over the mouse. But I guess, you know, you're just supposed to hold it like this. Um, and I don't know, it's not too bad. It is small. But I guess, you know, this is just uh, something you either like or you don't like. What's interesting is I believe this is a later revision of the mouse. It has a groove at the top up here, so you could uh, sort of feel the mouse button a bit better. You know, that's the design of it. It is not for everyone, but uh, I don't know. I, I think they're kind of cool, but I wouldn't necessarily use it every day. In the year 2000, Apple released a brand new mouse, so if you weren't a fan of this model, you had the Apple Pro mouse to use. This was an interesting design as it was Apple's first optical mouse, so there was no ball to mess around with, and it actually had three different options of click sensitivity. So you could adjust this little wheel in the back to even be less sensitive or neutral or more sensitive. 
The story of this mouse's origin is interesting. Apparently, when Steve Jobs was reviewing preview mice models for Macintosh computers, this prototype was developed, but it didn't have any buttons yet at the time. So apparently, Steve Jobs saw this and said, that's great, our mouse shouldn't have any buttons. And the designers just played along with it. So they were forced to sort of create this mouse to Steve Jobs' liking that had no buttons at all. When you click, you're actually moving the whole mouse down. As you can see, this area is actually moving. This trend of the whole mouse clicking down instead of individual buttons will continue throughout Apple's product line for the next few years. When Apple released its brand new iMac G4 computer, it had a matching mouse to go with it. This mouse comes in white to match the iMac, although unfortunately this one's a bit discolored, but it has the same functionality as the Apple Pro mouse with its sensitivity adjustment on the bottom. A later revision of the Apple Pro mouse was just simply titled Mouse. It dropped the Pro name and it also removed the functionality of adjusting your click sensitivity. This mouse became the standard Apple mouse for the next few years. A year after, in 2003, Apple introduced their first wireless mouse. This mouse worked with any Mac that had Bluetooth wireless capabilities, and it solved the issue of short mouse cables being problematic for some users. Besides being wireless, the mouse is identical to its USB wired version, as it only has one button. In 2005, Apple finally changed the design of their mouse with the Mighty Mouse. This would eventually become standard issue on all Macintosh computers, and there are a few functionalities in this mouse that make it unique. First off, it's the first Apple mouse that has a secondary mouse button. It's not visible here, but there's both a primary click and a secondary click. Second is this scroll ball. The scroll ball on the Mighty Mouse is interesting. It's a 360 degree little ball, and you could scroll horizontally and vertically and basically in any direction. This is similar to the PC mice that were out at the time that could use a, a vertical scroll wheel, but obviously with this, you had a bit more control. The Mighty Mouse is similar in design to the previous Apple Mouse, although instead of this clear plastic, you just get a, a solid white plastic mouse. I don't know if Apple still has something against two button mice, but if you plug a Mighty Mouse into a Mac, Mac OS X will default both buttons as being the primary button. You have to go into the System Preferences panel and change the way the mouse works, changing the secondary button to actually work as a secondary click. In total, this mouse actually has four buttons if you count the squeeze buttons on the side. Although previous Apple mice had a similar design, the side areas didn't act as a button until the Mighty Mouse. So now that Apple released a two-button mouse, everything was right in the world, right? Well, not exactly. The problem was with the Mighty Mouse, the design sort of took precedence over the functionality. And the problem with the right click was that you couldn't really left click and right click easily. You had to lift your finger off the left click before you could perform a right click. Unlike the buttons on a standard PC mouse where there's this slit in the plastic allowing you to click either one independently, the Mighty Mouse has a one smooth plastic surface. There's no indent or split in the middle, so you have to be careful about how you click the mouse. The button isn't actually on the top of the mouse, but on the bottom. So when you click, the whole piece of plastic moves down. Therefore, you can't right click or left click simultaneously. This takes some getting used to, or you know, you could just buy a, a standard PC USB mouse if you really wanted to and it annoyed you to that extent. Secondly, the little ball on this Mighty Mouse, while convenient and sort of nice to use when it worked, had a problem for getting hair and dirt stuck in the mechanism. Because of this, the little ball would become hard to move or it wouldn't go in all of the directions it should. In typical Apple fashion, these weren't designed to be opened by users. Although you could pry it open if you really wanted to, there are no screws or anything that makes this easily accessible. Apple did have a support document where they suggested placing the mouse upside down and having a damp cloth and to move the ball around and try and get all that dirt out of there, but it wasn't really that successful in terms of relieving the mouse from all the debris that was inside. The real solution is to just rip the thing open and clean it, but uh, you know, not everyone was willing to do that. Thankfully, you could just buy a secondary mouse or you know, if you really wanted to, you could buy a new one, I guess, but that sort of defeated the purpose. I don't think they, they really fixed that functionality in the Mighty Mouse. Other companies would produce Mighty Mouse lookalikes that had a lot of the same functionality, but had a slit in the plastic that would allow you to use the left click or the right click just like you would on a traditional two-button mouse. 
The Mighty Mouse would be Apple's last USB wired mouse. In July 2006, Apple released a wireless version of the Mighty Mouse. This was unique as it used a laser sensor to increase tracking. Thankfully for Mac users, Apple didn't wait another 20 years for improving the design of their mouse. In 2009, Apple released the Magic Mouse. This mouse combined some of the features and technology that were used on the multi-touch trackpads and the iOS devices to feature multi-touch gestures on top of the plastic of the mouse. Then in the summer of 2010, Apple introduced the Magic Trackpad. This is essentially a giant Bluetooth version of a MacBook multi-touch trackpad. Just like the Magic Mouse, the Magic Trackpad supports multi-touch gestures. These include swiping through pages of a document or swiping through different windows of your computer, pinching and zooming, all that fun stuff. In fall of 2015, Apple updated both the Magic Mouse and the Magic Trackpad. They were redesigned slightly and now included built-in rechargeable batteries instead of AA batteries. These now charge via an iPhone lightning cable which plugs into the USB port on your Mac. If you've only used a mouse provided by Apple, you may be missing out. Over the years, I've collected an array of Macintosh compatible mice. Some are very unique in their approach and some are rather simple. So let's take a look and see what makes them special. Except for the original Macintosh and Macintosh Plus computers, all of Apple's computers throughout the 1990s used a proprietary port for connecting keyboards and mice. This was the ADB or Apple Desktop Bus port. Although similarly looking enough to the PS2 port on a Windows computer, they are not compatible or interchangeable. Before the days of USB mice, it was pretty easy to mix up an ADB Apple desktop bus connector and a PC PS2 connector. They are both little mini DIN ports and they look pretty similar to the common individual. If you're not a tech savvy person, you could easily mistake one for the other. Okay, so let's dive into some different mice. Um, these are just the ones I have. It's certainly not all the different compatible Macintosh mice that were out there, but I think these are interesting. So let's have a look. The first non-Apple mouse I actually used was this MicroSpeed Kid Track. I got this for my birthday. I don't necessarily know if I asked for it or I probably did, but it's basically an oversized trackball, but it's meant for children, as you can tell by the wonderful colors here. Uh, it has three buttons, a primary, another primary, and a, I think a hold and drag button here. Um, it has this little Y connector that allows you to plug it into your Mac and plug something else through this little port. So you could plug a keyboard or something else through if your Macintosh only had one ADB port. And I guess if you weren't plugging this into your keyboard. It's quite big too. I mean, it's meant for kids. and. I don't know, kids' hands are usually pretty small, but uh, I guess it worked. I mean, I used it as a kid just fine without any issues. This was the first trackball I ever used, and I quite liked it. I don't have any problems with it. Um, I did like to draw on the computer, and I would use a regular mouse, so this Y connector came in handy in case I wanted to just plug in a standard Apple mouse, because you could have them both plugged in at the same time. The second pointing device I want to show you is an Alps Glide Point. Uh, yes, it's a little mini trackpad that's on a cable. You could plug this into your power book that had a trackball or your Macintosh desktop if you wanted to. And it gave you all the convenience of having a little trackpad. Now I actually liked this. I had a PowerBook Duo which had a trackball mouse that was always getting stuck. So I thought this was awesome because a lot of the PowerBooks that were out at the time only had a little trackball mouse. And so this you could easily upgrade to a trackpad without the cost of buying a brand new PowerBook. This is the Macintosh version of the Glide Point. There was a Windows version available, but this of course is the Mac one, so it has an ADB port. This trackpad has two buttons, one on the right, one on the left, and a top little button that you could click to uh, drag items just by holding one button and moving it across the screen. This would simulate holding down the mouse button without actually having to hold down the button. You have to remember that at this time, the Macintosh operating system still required you to hold down the mouse button fully when you were working on navigation menus and the menu bar and things like that. So you had to click and hold as you were scrolling down and then you had to let go to make your selection. Years later on Mac OS 8, this was changed and you could just click and let go and you would still be in that menu. You wouldn't have to hold down that button. But having this little button and that functionality was very handy back in the day. In fact, this external trackpad is actually bigger than some of the trackpads that were included in Apple's PowerBooks. 
Then again, Apple's Magic Trackpad is, well, much larger. I actually still use this today. It takes up a lot less space than a mouse and it's easy to just plug in and go, especially if you're just trying to service an old computer just to boot it up and get it to work. Now these are relatively easy to find online and they're pretty cheap. There's a few different models of them made. Just make sure if you're buying one of them that it is the Macintosh version as Windows versions were available also. Next we have another trackball, this time by Kensington. This is the Turbo Mouse and it's a pretty much a Macintosh trackball. It has two buttons here, a huge ball that you can move around and uh, it does have its own ADB cable but it's detachable from the back. You have two ADB ports there so you could plug in your keyboard or your mouse or whatever you want to use. Uh, it gives you the option of interchanging cables there so if you don't like using a long cable or you like using a short cable you have that option to swap them out. The software included with the trackball allows you to customize the buttons and what they do as well as manage other settings. The next mouse I want to show you is a bit of an oddity. Which of these mice is not made by Apple? Can you guess? It's actually this one. So this is an interesting mouse that I picked up from a friend. He was selling a Macintosh uh, TV, which is a black Macintosh Performa. And uh, this mouse was included in the box of cables he gave me. And it looks like your standard Apple Desktop Bus 2 mouse, but it's a little interesting. The little buttons here curve upwards, so they sort of have these little horns. It's an interesting design. I've never seen anything like this. I don't know what the purpose of this was. I'm guessing maybe it's something to allow you to feel the mouse button edge better. I don't know. As far as I can tell, it's just a, a single click. There's no two button functionality on this mouse. Um, the model, there's a little sticker here that has some information. It's a M-U-S-D-N-L and that's all it says. I tried to do some Googling and uh, couldn't find out anything much about it. Uh, so I'm just going to guess it was some third party mouse. It does work fine. Uh, the button is just interesting as it curves upwards there, but hey, it's a mouse. It works, but it's just a little weird. Next up, we have an interesting pointy device by Fellows called the Thumbelina. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's called. This is similar to the glide point except instead of a trackpad it has a little trackball. It's convenient, it's portable, it's tiny, it has a long cable. Um, it does have two different mouse buttons there and a click and hold button. That little light uh, over here will actually light up solid when you are using that button to drag and drop things. The little ball actually works quite well. It doesn't seem stiff or anything like that. Um, it does have uh, screws here, so unlike the Apple Mighty Mouse, you can open it up if you need to service it. Next, we have a Kensington mouse in the box, and mine is still sealed in the box. Uh, I got this for $3 at a thrift store. It's pretty cool, but I do have one that's out of the box, although a bit yellowed. Um, this was just your standard ADB single button mouse. Uh, it has your little ADB port here. Mine is missing the back, but um, you can see it's a pretty ergonomic design. It has a nice click to it, and it's, hey, a mouse. It works fine. This box always stood out to me, and I remember seeing it at places that normally wouldn't carry Macintosh items. I think Sears even carried this model because I remember seeing that box and thinking, oh, that's weird. It has a little Mac OS face on it. That must be something for a Macintosh. And they did actually have a USB version that came out. This mimics the design of the iMac with its translucent blue and clear plastic. Uh, this is a USB version, but uh, it still has the traditional ball here, so it's not an optical mouse or anything like that. Because the iMac adopted USB ports and Apple's machines from then on shipped with them, you didn't have to worry about mice being ADB or PS2 anymore. Generally speaking, any USB mouse would work on a Macintosh computer. Wireless ones may require additional software, but corded mice just simply work. This one is a Wheelman mouse by Logitech, and I quite like this design. It's a USB optical mouse has a primary and a secondary click and a little scroll wheel. I used this for years on my Macintosh PowerBook G4 12 inch uh, computer and I liked it a lot. Um, I actually did a lot of drawing and animating with this mouse so it's uh, quite nostalgic to uh, hold this in my hand and just think of all the things I've, I've done with this thing. 
I saved the best for last. This is a mouse that I've been looking for for a few years. And well, let's just open the box and I'll show you what makes it so special. This is the Kids Mouse by Logitech for Macintosh. I've been looking for this mouse for a few years. I remember seeing it when I was a kid. One of the school computers had it plugged into a Macintosh LC. And I thought the design was so interesting. It was a mouse uh, that was a mouse. I thought it was really interesting that the wire for the mouse came out at the bottom rather than the top where the buttons were. Now this was actually released for uh, Windows and Macintosh computers, so there are two different versions here. The one that comes in the blue box is made for the Macintosh, so that's easy to identify. Of course, this mouse is designed for children in mind, and it's small to allow it to fit in a child's hands. Although it does have two buttons, they are both single click or primary buttons, so there's no right click functionality here. Now it does say it has a special connector that allows you to use this kid's mouse with your current mouse simultaneously. So now that I have this, let's open it up. I got this on eBay for $25 and I don't know, to me it's well worth it. I love this little thing. Okay, so it comes in this styrofoam backed uh, container here with uh, plastic holding it on top. And uh, we get some, some paperwork here too. Open this first. Awesome, a registration card. Uh, I won't fill this out, but maybe I'll photocopy it and send it in. Okay, how to get help. So there's a technical support hotline here we could call if we can't figure out how to use a mouse. Um, I guess this folds out into a manual. I like the little Macintosh 2CI they use there. So let's see what we have to do. Can check your package contents. Connect the kid's mouse to your keyboard. Learn how to use and care for your kid's mouse. Do you have to feed it? Um, registration card. Ah, okay, so here's a little pass-through connector they talk about. So there's a little cap for it there and you could plug in another keyboard or mouse right onto this. That's convenient. The kid's mouse doesn't need a special pad or grid, just a clear desk space. And it gives you cleaning instructions and it even has BBS and CompuServe instructions here. That's pretty cool. Ooh, a Logitech product catalog. Ah, look at that Photo Man digital camera. Oh, I love these things. This will be fun to look through later. Or, or now, actually. Ooh, Scan Man. Okay, there's a lot of scanning accessories here. Looks like some are color, some are black and white. Here we go, Mouse Man, Track Man, First Mouse, Kids Mouse. Well, there's a lot of different mice here. It looks like only three of them are Macintosh compatible. This mouse was worth it just for the catalog. Ooh, what happened to that guy? I guess he uh, had too much multimedia. So here's some microphones, sound cards, speakers. Ooh, a Photo Man Plus digital camera. That's interesting. It doesn't even give you specifications on this camera. It just casually mentions that it can send grayscale images to your computer. So I guess it's not a color camera. Ooh, a Cyberman 3D controller. Ah, sorry, getting off track. Okay, let's get to the mouse. So I'm just gonna, I guess, lift off this plastic. <laughs> I like that the background is simulating cheese. I just noticed that. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Look at this, it's so tiny. Oh, I love that click. And it has a little white ball here. And, uh, I mean, it's tiny, but it's not that bad to use. I'd say the iMac mouse is worse than this. I mean, just look, look at it. It has little eyes and little ears and a little tail. How could you not like this? Okay, so 
All right, that's neat. So I guess to keep this wire um, from getting an odd spot, since it is at the bottom of the mouse, it is attached over here, so it can't uh, get in the way. So I guess that's pretty convenient. Uh, so let's plug this in and give it a go. Wow, I actually like the way this handles. I mean, it's a mouse with the ball, but it almost feels like an optical mouse. Maybe it's because the ball is so tiny that it's, you know, quicker to react or easier to maneuver, but it's very smooth. And the buttons, while they're different, uh, you know, they, they are easy to click. And uh, it actually is nice having two of them. Although, uh, even on a system like Mac OS 9, uh, there is no secondary button since the uh, buttons are just both primary in this case. But it is uh, still pretty cool. I'm still happy I got it. Uh, it was uh, fun to actually use one. I don't even think I used the one that was in school. Although my hand is quite too big for it, I actually like the way it feels. You know, it's, it's uh, very interesting. I like the little ears, of course. I think those are pretty cool. And uh, actually the, uh, the wire being on the bottom does not bother me at all, especially since it's bound to the left like that. Age is three and up. So let's undo this little pass-through cap at the end here so we could plug in another mouse. You may think, why not just unplug the kid's mouse? Well, you're not really supposed to hot swap ADB devices. It's not like USB. So the pass-through connector is really handy because it lets you have both mice plugged in at the same time. Okay, cool. So yeah, both mice work as advertised. I guess you just don't want to move the other mouse while you're using the other, but that shouldn't be much of a problem. So those are the Macintosh mice and pointing devices I wanted to show you today. I'm particularly happy with this little Logitech kids mouse. I mean, it's a mouse that looks like a mouse. You can't get much better than that. Uh, I have a few other videos that are coming up, so check out Mac84.net or check us out on Twitter and Instagram or Patreon to see what uh, we have coming up in the pipeline. And thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you back here next time.